Here's an example that illustrates why we avoid rounding as much as possible when we're doing the calculations for these compound interest examples. So we'll illustrate by supposing that we invest $1,000 at 5% compounded monthly for 30 years. So we summarize P is 1,000, R is 0 0.05, N is 12, T is 30. Now suppose we use the future value formula, F equals P times 1 plus R over N to the NT. And we calculate how much the account will hold at the end of 30 years. Now R over N is 0 0.0041 and then 6 repeating. If we were to round that off, we would get answers that were slightly different from the true value. So if we don't round, what we find is that at the end of the 30 years, this account holds $4,467.74. If we round that off to 0 0.0041667, so rounding off after seven decimal places, we get an F of $4,467.80, which is pretty close to the exact value. It's only off by six cents. But if instead we round that to 0 0.004167, so six decimal places, we get an answer that's off by 54 cents. So the error grows a little bit each time we round off more decimal places. And you notice by the end, if we just round it down to 0 0.004, we're off by over $200 in our final answer. So the lesson of this example is to round as little as possible. If you have to retype in the number, type in lots of decimal places to keep the errors small. But if possible, do what we've done in the earlier examples and use the answer function in your calculator or store the answer in the memory to avoid having to retype it in.